I think it's very important that we teach kids about democracy and civics. We have to get kids engaged in um, their community and government so that they actually get out there and become an active part of society. What happens if we aren't actively involving our students in their own learning? What happens if our students aren't connected with uh, social issues? What happens if they aren't learning how to argue and uh, disagree respectfully? Fifteen years ago, nobody wanted to come to this school because the climate here was it was bad. We're level three school. We were identified as an Illinois priority school, which meant you're in the bottom 5% in the state. And I think that was a wake-up call for the school. And that's um, exactly when I started here. And so it created an opportunity for us to like do some gut checks and recognize that we actually needed to do some work. Principal Gallup came in and made a lot of changes. The teachers here are amazing. There's a lot of them that live in the neighborhood. The transformation here, now kids want to come here. They want to get into the IB program. They want to come here. They stay after school. They come back for activities. And that filters out back into the community. When the state of Illinois and when Chicago Public Schools worked together to make sure that every school was doing civics education, it was an adjustment for us at first because it was a new class to teach. But what it did was it provided a platform for more democratic schooling. Civic education is about um, understanding of the processes of government um, as well as how to affect change with the government. And uh, one thing we push for here is to have students be advocates, starting with advocates in their school, but then taking it outside the walls. Our civics classes, which is our standard class at the freshman level, is a way that we introduce students to research methods, that we introduce students to um, having a much bigger voice. We are focused on argument of literacy and students being able to weigh all the evidence um, goes really well with Common Core because it's about um, the students having those skills, literacy skills, in writing and also speaking, and also de dealing with civil discourse with each other. I expected it to be like a elementary school social studies, you know, nice and easy, you know, a class you can skate by. But it turned out to be a lot harder than that. You actually dive into government and how it works and the politics view on everything. And it's, it's challenging, but it's a good challenge. And I like that. In terms of numbers, our graduation rate's gone from about 61% to this year we might be at over 85%. Uh, so that's gone up by about 20 points. Our college enrollment rate has gone from 35% to 70%. So that means every single year we've had more seniors, and every single year a higher percentage of those seniors were, were going off to college. 30? It's only 30 people. 31.5. Because usually when we do surveys, we usually have more freshmen. And then juniors, it was like half the lunchroom was filled. That was my first period AP government class. They are done with the exam, so now they move on to their action project, where they choose a topic that's really important to them. It can be in the school or the community, and they go through a process of researching it through primary and secondary research. They create their own surveys. So what you just saw is their student survey data and they conducted it yesterday in the lunch rooms and today they're going over the results of it. This is SM for information. And then... I like to add a little Samara said. It does apply to their life outside of high school and outside the classroom. I tell them all the time, civics doesn't live in the classroom. Civics is in the community. Civics is in your everyday life. The Democracy Schools program uh, recognizes high schools throughout the state of Illinois that have made a school-wide commitment to civic engagement and civic learning. George Washington High School is one of our 74 uh, democracy schools uh, statewide uh, in, in one of about a dozen schools uh, recognized within the, the confines of the, the city of Chicago. The democracy school process entails uh, teams putting together an interdisciplinary group that includes teachers from multiple disciplines as well as students and administrators. And the idea of this democracy school is that it is deeper than just happening in social studies classrooms because um, every adult in the building is hopefully working to really 
really develop the skills and dispositions that our students need to be effective citizens in their communities. One thing uh, we've actually seen across Chicago public schools, not just at our democracy schools, uh, is the advent of student voice committees. Uh, and the, these committees represent a cross-section uh, of the student body and have ongoing opportunities uh, to both explore issues of concern to students, but then to have face time uh, with school leaders to have conversations about how those issues could, could be resolved. For me, student voice is students being able to find evidence, articulate it, and have a way of actually saying it in a meaningful way. The teachers that are there, while they help with the discussion, they try to make sure that it's our discussion to have, because in the end it's the student's voice that is like going into it. I got involved in civics activities um, by just really joining the student voice community at my school. Being in that environment with those type of students um, raised me to be like a leader for my school and my community. Being in my civics department, my civics class, and then having my my SEC meetings like on a weekly basis, that helped me strengthen my, my, my evidence gathering. So when we first became a democracy school, I think our team was thinking there were two main apparatuses originally, civics classes and a student voice committee. And then the student voice committee has been huge. Um, students realize that um, when they organize, um, they can actually have an impact. We're sitting in a school right now that's going to have like a $20 million makeover. Um, the reason that's happening is because of that student voice committee and alignment with our local politicians and Chicago Public Schools. So our principal, he kind of makes sure that um, all the students feel like their voices are being heard. I speak with our principal almost regularly about, our, like, about student voice and about like, making sure that every voice is heard. I think there's definitely been a larger focus outside of just the social studies department on student voice. So our science department is doing a lot with engaging the students with the community. I see it happening in our English classes where they're doing more speeches about topics that students are passionate about. So we're seeing more of a conscious effort to name student voice and to actively incorporate it into our classroom. Before I came to Washington High School, I wasn't involved in any sort of um, civic activity or political activity. And now I'm, I feel like I'm very involved in um, what goes on in my community and in my school. McCormick is focused on, on teacher professional development um, because we think it's critical uh, to affecting uh, teaching and learning in classrooms at scale. There are other key stakeholders like administrators, uh, but, but I, I think the secret sauce uh, to scaling high quality uh, civic learning uh, is ongoing investments in professional development for teachers. And I think teacher uh, professional development really helps to engage adults and educators in the building um, to really emphasize their own development in this process because if teachers are not able to see their own agency in a building then it's very difficult for them to cultivate this work with their students programs and PDs that are already offered within the CPS civics requirements and curriculum has really given a lot of teachers throughout the city of Chicago, I think, a lot of opportunities to grow, especially around civics education and really transforming the classroom, for civics at least, from a classroom that focuses more so on what does government do to rather what can you do within a government? What can you do in a community? What's your role as a community member? Democracy schools really provide a model for what education reform can look like in schools. Through the work, we've learned much more that like, our job is to prepare kids for life. And preparing for democratic engagement is like a foundation of it. So much so that you know, when we create a new vision and mission for the school, it doesn't say anything um, explicitly about rolling in college, but it does say things explicitly about being ready and prepared to uh, engage in democracy and to contribute.